Hello and welcome to the Slackware ARM vlog. I'm Stuart Winter, the platform architect for Slackware on the ARM platform. In this video, it's tangentially related to running Slackware on the ARM platform. I have a volume on one of the VMs that I use to do stuff for the Slackware ARM project. And that VM runs in Linode. Now, some of you guys, some of you Slackers I know use Linode and Akamai generously sponsors uh, the, the Slackware project in terms of compute and storage and CDN as well for the website. So we've got access to that. So inside of my VM, I just need to increase the uh, one of the volumes I have there and then remount it so I've got more space available. So that's what we're going to do in this episode. There's a few command line things we're going to do. To be honest, I haven't done this in Linode before. I've resized partitions, you know, uh, volumes many different times, but I haven't done it in Linode. So let's uh, go about doing that now. Okay, so the first thing is, let's have a look at the machine itself. So we've got a partition, or rather a volume, that's mounted under forward slash data. And this is this one here that you see in the Linode console. Now, the first thing you might notice, you eagle-eyed viewers, is that 80 gigabytes is not the same as 30 gigabytes. And that's because I already started to resize this and then I was promptly told that my calculations were incorrect and I need to increase it further. So 80 gigs is not enough. So what we're going to do is I am first of all going to unmount uh, whoops, the uh, data partition, or volume, uh, mount I should say, and I'm going to edit the size of this. So let's click on, no that's not it. Uh, where is it? Resize. So I'm going to, I think, 820. Yeah, it should be, well, let's just make it 150 gigs. That'll do us for a long time. So resize that. So one of the cool things about Linode is that it provides instructions like this, which is really cool. Okay, so the first thing, we've already unmounted it. And let's have a look at block, is it dash O? Oh, yikes. What, what is that? That's not it. Hang on. Dash dash help. Let's have a look. Okay. Dash S. Okay. So let's have a look at the SCSI devices. Okay. Okay. And then we want to have a look at SCSI. SCSI. Okay. All right. Okay. So, um, yeah, so let's have a look at what SF disk shows. So we've already unmounted it, SDC, because that's what that's that's where it is here. So this is S SDC is the volume that you see here. So if you look at the instructions here, oh, I can't do that because they've gone now. <laughs> Hang on. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. So okay. So that's F FDC, but you'll see that according to F disk, it's still thirty gigs. I've already unmounted it, but if I try resizing it, um, now this is this is the other thing. So if you do e2fs dash y, so we're going to run a file system check. The thing about this is that you'll see what I did. I don't know why I did this. So I haven't created a partition table and made a file system. I've made the file system on the on the actual device. Most people wouldn't do that, but it, you can do that. I've now run a file system check on that. It's all good. So we can now resize it. But the problem is, if you do resize to FS um, dash, actually, I can't remember what it is now. Tell you what, let's increase the let's increase it by another gig. <laughs> right, let's do that. Let's make it 150. Let's make it 160. Then I've definitely got loads of space, right? So okay, so we've unmounted it. We've we've done the FSCK. Okay, so then if we try resize to FS SDC, it's already the right size, right? Because if you look at F disk, it's still 30 gigs. Now, this is just a different way of accessing the same thing, right? So I'm using SDC, this is using a different pointer to it. I'm going to remove it from the SCSI bus. This is how I used to do it in the old school days when I used to replace disks out of you know rack mount servers. You'd unmount them, remove them from the SCSI bus, physically unplug them. They were hot plugs, so you didn't have to turn the server off. Physically unplug them and put them back in again and then re-add them to the SCSI bus and then you can work on the disk again. So that's what I'm gonna try here. 
I don't really want to reboot the machine if I can possibly help it. I'm not into rebooting things. You don't need to do that in Unix for most cases. Let's just do this again. And then cat slash box. So we know that it's this one here. Because you can see that, I think this is the channel. Oh, that's the host. Okay. So you can see that SCSI 2 host matches this one here. And this is the arm slap data as well. So, right, so we know that that's the right one. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do this. It's definitely unmounted, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, no, it's not actually. Oh, yes, it is. Okay, that's fine. Let's I wonder why DF does that when you give it something that doesn't exist. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Anyway, <laughs> it's not mounted. Okay, so let's do... Right, so this is the trick. I don't know if this actually works. Uh, remove single device. Um, so this would be... I think it's... Uh, which one would it be? Before. Yeah, so it's this. Now, I don't know if you can put colons in, actually, to be honest. Let's find out. Now, let's make sure it's exactly that it is that one, right? Otherwise, it's going to remove the SDA disk and make the thing break. Cat, cat slash process, scuzzy, scuzzy. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so I just simply told the, uh, the scuzzy driver basically take this sort of physical disk off the bus. That's basically what I've done now. Uh, so I've got SDC. Uh, okay. So, okay. So I've removed the SCSI drive. I've re-added it, but the disk, the actual size of that um, sort of physical device remains 30 gigs. So that's the original size. Now I've run part probe to try and make the kernel refresh its cache and yeah, that doesn't actually make any difference. So I can't at the moment think of any other way of notifying the um, kernel that the disk has changed or the size has changed underneath. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to have to reboot the machine and bring it back up again. If any of you guys can think of any other way of doing this, let me know, but I can't, I can't think of any other way of doing it. So that's a shame, but anyway, there we go. Let's reboot that. So Linode has the ability to provide you a, a console of your VM. So and they call it Glish or Weblish. You can also SSH to it as well. So this is really useful. So if the machine won't boot properly or you want to change the boot parameters, you can do it here. Okay, so the machine has rebooted. I'm back as root again. And we have our data uh, file system mounted and it's 30 gigs. As it was before so that's okay so let's you mount that like that and now so yeah here's so you can either use um, e2fsck or uh, when i was first trying this uh, to resize it earlier um, i actually just looked at the source code of the slackware arch64 installer plugin what that re um, that sets up the partitions and stuff like that in the installer and what it used to do uh, until I realized it was just a really silly idea but cool technically was it used to resize the slash boot partition so I just I couldn't remember how to resize it so I just I just looked at the code Let, let's use uh, parthead because uh, I quite like parthead it's uh, really nice and versatile so let's just paste that into a into the shell so I can work on it so parthead so dev would be sdc yeah dev slash SDC and let's dump that and just put print. I think you can do print. Yeah, cool. So you can see the new size there. Question is why does why is that larger than that? I guess it's different uh, units or uh, sizes. Oh well, anyway, that's that. So uh, let's resize it. Uh, yeah, cool. So that's. So that would be just one. Yeah, because partition size one, you can see there. I guess that's right. Anyway, I don't know. I haven't actually uh, done that before. Uh, okay, hang on. Okay. So. Uh, 
resource block. Oh, into FSCK resource. There we go. Yeah, I'm not sure I really needed to research to do the thing with part ed now, actually looking at it, but okay. It's fine. I'm just doing this off the top of my head. I haven't really planned it out. <laughs> I, to be honest with you, I don't do much sysadmin work anymore. That's what I used to do many years ago, but not these days. I just um, hack on the OS and uh, make things work. Always, I always take a backup of stuff. In this case, uh, I haven't taken a backup of this because it's actually a backup of something else and some other stuff. So if it broke, I could just resync it, not the end of the world. Let's see if uh, SDC... Oh, don't need to do that. What am I doing? Okay, there we go. Yes, I changed data. Coolio. Do, did I lose everything? No. <laughs> Great. Okay, so there we go. So now I've resized my uh, data volume and I've got plenty of space for what I'm going to do next. All right, well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode, even though, as I said, it is tangentially related uh, to Slackware Arm. And again, if you want to use Linode as well, you can sign up to Linode and uh, join us on the platform. All right, take care, guys, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.